Hi everyone, and welcome to another Bass Singer Reaction. If you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That is the best way to help my channel grow. And if you want to take it one step further, go ahead and check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below, and you can join for as little as $1 a month. Get all kinds of behind-the-scenes access, releases to rough drafts, merchandise, one-on-one -on -one interactions with me, all that good stuff. Just $1 a month. And, um... I think all the patrons who have joined would agree that it's totally worth a little bit to get that extra access, if you like what I'm doing. Today we're going to be taking a totally uh, a, a different kind of, a different genre entirely from what I've been doing. I've been doing pretty much entirely a cappella music, which, which I love, but you know my main background is opera and in the classical world. So today we're going to listen to uh, Voces 8 or Voces 8. I'm not sure actually how they pronounce their name. Um, we're going to do, we're going to check out Sleep by Eric Whittaker, which is a piece I've certainly performed in chamber choir before. Eric Whittaker is my favorite modern choral composer. Uh, I think there's just an exquisite beauty to his, his text settings and his, <clears throat> the harmonic structures he puts within his music. And, um, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to take a, we're going to take a big switch from acapella today check out Sleep by Eric Whitaker, performed by Voces 8. So let's go ahead and dive into this beautiful, magical, amazing piece. We end up there. E flat. I mean, just right off the bat, there is something so incredible about human voices, especially human voices of that are really spanning the 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 frequency spectrum. Here, you have low basses to high sopranos, and there's just something truly magical when voices like that are blending. And even more so when they're blending in a live setting. Now, this was recorded, and there has been some editing to it, but they're recording all to the same microphone, so it's not like if someone's out of tune, they just tune that. Like what you can do in all this hyper-produced a cappella music uh, that, that I've been commenting on. This is what they're doing now. This is the tuning they're actually getting in the room. And... Groups like this are just incredible at it. I mean, this is really one of the few, like, full-time, full-salaried, fully paid uh, choir organizations in the world. There really aren't that many of them. And it takes, I mean, it takes a really select group of singers. And the thing about choir singing is it's not about the individual instruments. You You don't have to be an outstanding soloist. You don't, ha you don't have to have this incredible, a virtuosic, powerful instrument. The choir is best served by voices that blend well and people with extreme musicality that can tune to one another in real time and, and uh, work harmoniously, you know, not just musically, but as a, as a unit, as a fabric that helps serve the music as best they can. So um, that's all to say that this is just an exceptional group, and you can tell from the first second they start singing that their blend is exquisite and that they, they have an extreme sense of musicality. No one's trying to stick out unless it's notated in the music or the director's made an artistic interpretation. <clears throat> Incredible. Beautiful start. Let's, uh, we got a five-minute video, so I won't, I won't talk as much as I am now. Um, throughout as I pause because it'll take it'll take too long to get to the end but I just wanted to give a nice foundation of kind of what is important to listen to and what is so respectable about an amazing group like this so let's let's move forward So 
we've got a we've got an E against an F there. I've mentioned dissonance before. This creates dissonance, and I have specifically mentioned Eric Whitaker's use of dissonances. It usually captivates more of a mysterious, beautiful, magical kind of feeling than dissonance can often capture, which is just kind of crunchy and uncomfortable. There's nothing uncomfortable about this dissonance that he's he's put in this music. Also love they had a beautiful carry through the phrase where you expect them to breathe, but of course they're all trained with breast support. And so they, they carry all through this entire phrase with one breath as opposed to most choirs that perform, you know, this piece probably have to take a breath in that space there. Um, and also choirs like this are exceptional at what's called stagger breathing, where they will intentionally plan their breaths, not what's written in the music, so that the choir sound never takes a break. It can just be one continuous flowing sound the whole time, and it's as if the choir, or no one in the choir is breathing, when really they're all sneaking breaths in a planned fashion. fifth mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love the uh, I guess fourth from the from the bottom there but then the, the other half of that octave or the other part of that octave is the fifth I love an open fifth it sounds very medieval and also coming out of this texture this harmonic texture that Eric Witter is painting here to hear just an open fifth it's like uh it's just so simple. It's simple in its beauty. After coming out of all this dissonance, this like minor second, major second dissonance he's got throughout, to just hear that thick open fifth is just a thing of beauty. Something about technique you use for singing choir music, it is still classical technique, but it's radically different from, from operatic technique. You're not going for the power. You're not going for that extreme resonance that you do in opera. You are also holding back vibrato because straight tone blends much better. That was always a really tough thing to navigate for me and for other tough singers was going from opera rehearsal or your voice lessons into choir because it, f it feels unhealthy to once you've learned how to use vibrato to, to stop it. But you can totally do it in a, in a healthy, safe way as long as you have mastered your breath support. Um, and that's what, of course, all these singers have done. So they're using classical technique, but it's a classical technique that's radically different from singing opera. They've got the backspace in there. They're creating a, a darker, warmer color intentionally. And this were like a show choir or something like that. Um, so they're using classical technique, but it's, but it's radically different from operatic classical technique. So you've got them sustaining a C. I love when Eric Whitaker does this. He does a lot of pedal tones, which is where you sustain the bottom pitch while the upper voices move. And he has a lot of, uh, he writes in a lot of just basically holding a, a chord above, not, not the bass tone, a higher voice sustaining, which creates all these suspensions here and there and creates that distance here and there. And it just makes, it's the coolest feeling how it resolves and unresolves and resolves and, unre and, and unresolves. So, so pay attention to these sustained tones while the other voices move. It's not a clear chord change, right? One of them is, is highlighting some feature of a chord while the other voices move and it's kind of creating two chords at once. This is something that Eric Whitaker does a lot and it's... Um, Chordal clusters, some people call them, 
uh, harmonic clusters, that kind of thing, where you're just kind of stacking pitches to create dissonant, more of this kind of beautiful dissonance. Except the thing about this is you can you can feel it resolving and unresolving. So it's like a dissonance that you know is going to re resolve, as opposed to like a, some other kinds of dissonances. They just hit them, and it feels like it's not going to resolve, and that's get that's why it gets that edgy feeling. This you know as soon as they hit that chord it's gonna pull away and it's gonna resolve again. So just, let's go back 10 seconds and listen to these voices, listen to the, the low. I think it's that pitch, C4, sustained while the upper, while the higher voices are moving. Still sustaining. Yeah, yeah. One more thing there, let it be known, there was not a voice singing below a C4, that whole section. That is something truly unique to core music where even the bass voices will be written up into the fourth octave. Um, and it takes it takes a group of this caliber to have basses that can sing up there really light and comfortably. So, bravo, bravi tutti. It's just, it's just such an exceptional point. I really, truly listening to this music makes me miss, miss, miss singing in chamber choir. Uh, there's a group called the Madison Singers of James Madison. Uh, really, from what, I, from what I know and what I remember about doing competitions and stuff, one of the top groups for sure in the state and I think in a larger area of the country is a really strong chamber choir and I remember singing bass two for them for two years and it was one of the best experiences of my life um, there's just it, it is a special feeling to be in a group that blends <clears throat> that blends super well and has a has a really strong musical understanding of one another and the music and the text and has good relationships and it all all of that on and off the field as I, my athletics I would say on and off the stage, the whole the whole group has to mesh for it to really work. You know, if you have if you have people that don't get along, that comes out in the music. You know, that comes out in the performances. So you have to have a cohesive group harmonically and emotionally and all these things. And you know that goes into the the processes of hiring people. When they when these groups when groups of this caliber lose members, they go through an extensive audition process. And part of it is like how well do you vibe with the group. If you do not vibe with the group, we're not going to take you. It was the same way for my acapella group in undergrad. You know, during callbacks, you 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 uh, figure out who gels well and who works well together and who's a good colleague and and who you can have some fun with while you're working hard. Now, um, all of that goes into making a group that is so special, like this group. I regret to say I've never seen them perform live, but I have seen other groups uh, perform. I've seen Chanticleer. A number of times I've seen the King Singers. I performed with the King Singers actually in that group from undergrad. Um, and I've seen uh, what was the other group I saw? Uh, there's there's one other. Um, it'll I'll, I'll put it in the comments. There's one other really famous group like this that I've seen, but this is this is one I have yet to see, and I, I hope to someday. <laughs>
Ugh. I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna get emotional. Man, there, to me, to me, there is nothing, there is nothing more beautiful than a choir blending like that on a piece like this. I mean, Eric Whitaker just, you could tell me, I've sung this song, I know this song, even I wasn't sure when the soprano was going to hit that, was going to jump that second and create that suspense way up in the stratosphere there. Even I didn't know, because it feels like it's going to do it every time. That whole section, it just builds and builds and builds and climaxes perfectly and then gradually comes back down, one section flowing perfectly into the next section. It's a, it's just a masterpiece. It's just so well written. God. And so well sung. I mean, to create that kind of... To create that blend and create that sustain of pitch i mean like perfect bell tone like usually you only get that kind of blend with like heavy tuning heavy melodyne not these singers it's just wonderful guys if you ever get a chance to go see a top chamber choir like this don't think about it just do it and invite me maybe i'll go with you all right absolutely phenomenal the t I, t I said in another video, I'm not afraid to cry. I will cry listening to this stuff. 100%. Nothing, no shame in that. special and yeah i mean the ending you know there's some there's some text painting there drifting off to sleep it's like you're nodding off into the most peaceful sleep you'll ever have in your life it's so so a perfect example now you can't hear them doing it um if you could watch well no because if you know how to do it you can you can mask you, you don't have to show that you're breathing what i was going to say is they were for sure stagger breathing because no one's holding that last pitch like a minute straight. You could, I mean, you could theoretically sustain a pitch for a full minute, but um, it, it would be very likely to get like shaky as your, as your lungs just run out of air, right? Um, so I'm going to say 99.99% .99 chance there is a lot of very smooth, stealthy stagger breathing going on. So while a few singers were singing, one was breathing, and so on throughout the whole... Well, not the, the, the lower voices, the... Uh, yeah, the, the lower voices in the group were just... Sleep, sleep. But the higher voices... Just like that forever. Guys, it's as good as it gets. This is, in my opinion, some of the best choral music ever written, performed by one of the best chamber choirs on the planet. And it just, it just doesn't get more beautiful. I mean, clearly, you guys can tell how this kind of this music affects me. It makes me miss chamber choirs so much. Um, man, I, lo I love opera. Opera is my biggest passion. But man, I miss this music. I hope to be able to do some of both. Um, in my career. So guys, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this uh, totally total jump from, from the produced acapella stuff I've been doing. Uh, I'm going to do more of this because I love this stuff. You guys can tell I love this stuff. I hope you guys like it too. 
Um, and who knows, maybe I'll even, even check out some opera someday once the following gets a little bit bigger. Uh, bring some more attention, bring some more love to the opera world. It's so niche, it doesn't get nearly enough attention for the incredible singers and artists and directors and conductors and everything that goes into it. So, again, if you like this, please like and subscribe and join my Patreon, guys, if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff, see some projects I'm working on, which are coming out soon. I'm now settled in my new apartment in Philadelphia. <laughs> And so as soon as I can build this dang mini studio and make it somewhat soundproof, then I can blast away in here. But <laughs> until then, I'm going to spare my neighbors. So projects are on hold for a little while. But, you know, by the time this goes up, I might be totally, totally up and running again. So thank you guys for hanging out and getting emotional with me. I hope you liked my analysis. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.